My palette. Hey, a few streams ago, I asked about seeing your palette and you said you could possibly make a video of it. Will you be making a video about it? Yes, we'll try and film it soon. So here it is, it's full glory. We'll do a bit of a handheld session for you. And I'm just gonna go over everything. So, so this is a weird mix of uh, a white. I thought I'd use a lot and then it got dirtied up and it's disgusting. And then I basically have two yellows, which is how I like to do it. I have a yellow ochre and I have a lemon yellow. And these provide me a nice range of yellows. Here I have a neutral tint, AKA black. Here I have the same thing going on. Two reds, so I have the Pyro Scarlet and I have the Quinacridone Rose. Then I have nothing, this is an old Quinacridone Rose I stopped using. Then I have an old Burnt Sienna. Then I have a Burnt Sienna and a Burnt Umber. So these give me the neutral kind of warmth if I want to balance out my blues without adding a whole lot of red to it. And then if we move on, we have two types of blues. Notice a pattern here. I have the French Ultramarine and I have the Thalo Blue. Then I have two types of green. Notice a pattern? Well, that has nothing to do with that pattern. That is just two greens. So I have my sap green and then undersea green. But the way I view this undersea green is actually as part of these three colors, which are the Daniel Smith secondary set, which you can find a link to in the description box below in my gear page. But this is basically a secondary palette that has undersea green, carbazole violet, and I forgot the last one, quinacridone. Um, Quinacridone orange, I think it is. Uh, I'm gonna put up labels to make sure that I'm correct. And here I have two pieces of poop, literally. I don't know what that is. That used to be a Mayan blue, I think, and that is something else. But let's zoom back a bit and discuss this. So instead of memorizing different colors, let's actually see the logic behind this. So the way I like to work is a split primary palette, meaning I have two types of every primary color, which gives me all the range I need. Now, after a lot of experimentation, I figured out six colors that just work well together. In every context, pretty much, you can use these six, and you'll get beautiful results. That's how I did this thing, that's how I did a lot of the things that you'll see in my studio. So let's get to it. So I have two yellows, right? Two reds and two blues, and this is the main the crux of it. So two yellows, and let me actually rotate it this way. So the two yellows, again, warm and cool. The two reds, warm and cool. The two blues, warm and cool. And that's how I like to control the temperature. So let's say I want to have something that's a little darker, and I want it to be cooler. So I'm gonna reach out to my phthalo blue and get it there. Let's say I wanna get something a little darker and a little warmer or preserve some kind of warmth or not as cool. I'm gonna use my uh, French ultramarine, right? Or my ultramarine blue, depending, I use both kind of interchangeably. And then if I wanna balance these out more easily, we have the option of complementary color. So let's conclude for a second, two, two, two. Now. I could avoid using some of my, let's say, I wanna make a blue more neutral. How would I do that? I will add both a red and a yellow. But what if I don't wanna go through that hassle? All I wanna do is get it neutralized with one color. What am I gonna use? The color opposing it on the color wheel, which is conveniently orange, right? Red and yellow. So I have these oranges here to balance it out. Let's say I wanna balance my reds very easily. I have these greens to balance it out. Let's say I wanna balance out my yellows. I have this carbazole violet to balance it out. And that's how I do this. That's how I quickly change the mix and use it to my advantage. That's number one. Number two, I like secondary colors. And I discovered that Daniel Smith secondary uh, color, three color set is actually pretty good with all of the rest of these colors. So this undersea green, which is a beautiful, slightly muted green, Right, This carbazole violet is perfect for a lot of reasons. It can go pretty dark too, which is very useful. Right, And this quinacridone orange, and again, I may have may mistaken the name, I just forgot. Let me actually check that. Okay, we got it, it's quinacridone burnt orange. I was kind of correct. Quinacridone orange, quinacridone burnt orange, hopefully the label was correct. But sometimes I'd like to branch out and do a painting that's based only on secondary colors. Most of my work, 90% of it, I am using my six set of two blues, two reds, two yellows. And for some of it, I will use these. Another important component of my palette is a neutral tint, which is a very useful black that enables you to darken things fairly easily. Uh, and I like to use it a lot. So first off, I'll use it in my black and white work, you know, uh, monochromatic studies that I do. Then I'm gonna use it to darken pretty much any mix. 
I found that you can produce great greens if you combine that with a quinacridone with a with a yellow ochre. It just looks like green and it's beautiful and it's a fast way to create dark greens, right? So these are some of the main themes of my palette and that's how I like to use it. Here's what I will advise you. Choose three colors that you can get started with and feel comfortable with, a blue, a yellow, and a red. Try and make sure that they neutralize well. So if you mix all three in equal quantities and you get a nice neutral gray that isn't too red or too blue or too yellow, you got a nice mix. The surefire ones, again, French Ultramarine, Queen Acadone Rose, Lemon Yellow, should be able to help you with everything, right? Then what I would like you to do is to slowly introduce, and I'm sweaty because I just got out of the shower, I want you to introduce another single color every time, just another one more, and learn to use it. Pyrrole Scarlet is way more challenging than Queen Acadone Rose, okay? Uh, so every time you introduce one more color, one more color, one more color, until you feel comfortable with everything you're using and until you learn, oh, yellow ochre actually works well with phthalo blue and phthalo green. It works with things you wouldn't expect and you slowly build it together. Then try to incorporate neutralizing colors such as burnt sienna, right? And bring that in. Now, let's talk a bit about the elephant in the room, which is why does my palette look like this? And if you have to define this, I would say disgusting, right? So. The way I paint is lazy. I like to just I finish the painting process, I leave the palette to dry, and the next time I just continue with whatever I kind of have here. Why? This is actually a great base for mixing, because all I have to do is bring some water, pre-wet this, and then let's say I want it to go red, I'll just add a bit of red. I'll just add a bit of yellow if I want it yellow. I'll just do a bit of, you can always overpower the mix that is there. But what's the advantage of having all of this these messy colors. The advantage is it does create a more organic result. In nature, around us, it's very rare to see one pure, saturated, bright color. Where are you gonna see these? In human-made stuff, in cars and umbrellas and signs and all of those things, which tend to take about 1% of every scene you're gonna paint. Sometimes it'll take most of it, sometimes you're doing a specialized subject and that is fine, but for the most part, you won't encounter too many of these, which is why this is a great base because you're gonna push it one way or the other. It's gonna be a slightly blue neutral mix, a slightly red neutral mix. And I urge you to check out my video. I'm gonna put a link somewhere here uh, of painting the two people fountain side conversation painting, which I think should be available for purchase on my gallery. Check that out. There's barely any saturated colors there and it looks beautiful and realistic. That's the point of it. So why do I keep my palette messy? Because it's fun. Let's say I want to warm this up. I'll use a bit of what I have here. Bring it over there. I'll use it freely. Yes, if you want to be obsessed about bright, bright colors or you have a specific color that is indeed bright in the scene, maybe a bright clean yellow, whatever, clean up a well, work on that, but I'm gonna leave all the rest dirty for sure. So this is my palette. Hope that answers your questions. Leave questions in the comments below. I am curious to hear your thoughts. And let me ask you one more question. What is your favorite color maybe in this palette? I'm curious to hear. Let me know down below. I'm actually gonna do soon a giveaway, so we'll see about that. You know what, let's do a giveaway. If you wanna win this portrait, all you have to do is leave a comment below. Let me know which of these colors is your favorite. And if you don't have one, what your favorite color is. And then what I want you to do is make sure you follow me on Instagram. So make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube, comment, follow on Instagram. I'm gonna do a random winner, get this painting for free, sent to you. Thank you so much for watching, really, really do appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe once again, and we'll see you in the next vid real soon. And if you made it all the way to this part of the video, before I forget, here are two quick notes. One, this is actually an original painting and you can see me paint it here on YouTube. I'm gonna sign it for you and send it to you if you win the giveaway, so go ahead and do that. Second, I will put a link to an infographic showing you all of the pens in my palette and exactly what's in them if you wanna save it for future reference.